This is a drawing done in a fantastic piece of software called Manga Studio Pro, which has now morphed into a thing called Clip Studio Paint. And it's a great way of working. And here you can see the, the form of Miss Not a Plant. And when you're drawing a figure like this, always view it as a three dimensional object. Think in terms of the form, don't just think in terms of the outline, think of it as a form which is lit. And here you can see the lighting is beginning to come into play. And um, this is a kind of thing that will add great solidity to your drawing. I'm beginning to uh, chuck in some colour here. Uh, this is just a, like a rough drawing which will be imported into a piece of software called uh, Affinity Designer very shortly. And Affinity Designer, I'll explain a little bit more about that when we get there. But you can see that Miss Not a Plant is... Uh, Yes, yeah, so you're looking like a femme fatale. Okay, so we're now in Affinity Designer and I've opened up the wrong drawing and missed not a plant. Seem not to notice it and I'm stuck into <laughs> working it up in Affinity Designer. Affinity Designer is a piece of, uh, of vector-based software and by vector-based I mean that you actually draw with a pen tool, you create uh, shapes which are basically curve-based and when you close off the shape, you then fill it with a colour. And you can see that I'm thinking in terms of uh, some kind of green colour cut styling because she is uh, she's a plant. So, um, or at least she's got a passionate interest in horticulture. So we're banging in the colours. The the thing is, when you're starting off a picture, do don't get totally sucked into doing the face, just move around a bit, keep it lively, keep it going, um, and don't get distracted by the details at this stage. Try and look at the form overall and uh, fill those shapes in. There'll be plenty of time to get stuck into the details, and as you can see, we're just about to get stuck into the eyes. It's a classic saying that the eyes are the windows to the soul and I always believe that if you uh, if you get the eyes right uh, the rest of the face will follow but um, it is very important to to think in terms of the lighting and the overall atmosphere as well so you can see that I'm using this kind of like Hollywood lighting effect goes back to the golden age of film noir cast the top half of the face and shadow and it just adds so much more to her rather knowing expression. Uh, the great thing about Affinity Designer is, uh, well one of the many great things about it is that it is, it is once, you, one, once you've learnt it it's actually very very easy to use and it's very quick to use and you can try out a lot of different ideas and um, you can if, if they don't work out, you can you can discard them. Here you can see I'm actually beginning to sort of put uh, highlights into the eyes as well. Uh, it's just very important, you know. The 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 eyes uh, have a certain kind of moistness and sparkle about them, and if you can get that moistness and sparkle going, it immediately draws the viewer's attention to the eyes. And the whole thing with them, setting up a picture like this is is to guide the viewer's attention to the, the the elements of the picture that you really want them to focus on. So you can leave other elements uh, a little bit vague uh, and suggestive, but uh, particularly with a character like this, the expression is is all really. Uh, it's giving you a, a, a great insight into the personality of the person, and you should really feel that the, you know she can exists beyond the confines of of the image that she's going to be appearing on. I'm using uh, the uh, gradient tool here and I've, what I've done is I've created a I'm creating shapes within the overall shape of the head uh, and uh, using that gradient tool you can also adjust the opacity as well. This gives you a huge amount of control over the way that uh, the, 
the uh, character looks, the way that you achieve the modelling. And um, it's one of those um, uh, fantastic things which we never used to have, which is, you know, you can just experiment, you can, you can try lots of ideas out. Um, at the back of your mind, as I said earlier, you should have this um, sculptural awareness. You, you should have, you should not just be thinking in terms of the outline and the shape. You should be thinking of the figure existing in a real world with real light and wearing real clothes that have got a certain weight and a certain hang to them. And um, every, every kind of texture or bit of lighting that you add, you need to sort of consider it. You know, again, this is hinting at a little bit of underlighting, which again makes the character slightly more sinister than it would otherwise be. You've got the, sh the shadow over the face and you've got the underlighting and you've got little areas of sparkle, like on the lips and, uh, as I said, in the eyes. And now we're sort of starting to uh, work on the modelling of the uh, torso and being aware of the shoulders and the shoulder blades, clavicles, and then we're thinking about the material of the dress and the way that that falls uh, and the way it falls over the form of the f off, off the girl and we're putting in a little bit more shape we're pasting copying and pasting within the outline that we've, we've created there's something which affinity design just does fairly effortlessly it's, it's not quite the same when you're using adobe uh illustrator but Affinity Designer is one of those fantastic bits of software which costs all of about 50 quid and it's like the best of Illustrator meets the best of Photoshop. It is a fabulous piece of software and I've been using it for about the last, well, since it came out and really fallen in love with the thing. I just think it's, it's it, it, it does everything that I want it to do and I also use it in my animation as well because I, although I don't, use it for creating the characters. Uh, I use a program called Anime Studio Pro, but I certainly use Affinity Designer for creating the backgrounds. So I, I kind of uh, can import those backgrounds in layers uh, using um, Affinity Designer as my background generator. Anyway, you can see that we're adding the folds, we're adding the, uh, the feeling of the skirt. We're thinking about the light and we're thinking about where the light's falling. We're thinking about the bottom of a skirt, which could be a little bit sinister. It's just more than a, you know, a dress. It's it's turning into something a little bit organic and sinister at the bottom. It's got a life of its own. And you've got all these kind of plays upon the idea of Miss Not a Plant actually being a little bit of a plant. You know, she's got these kind of little tendrils. Uh, you can have great fun with her hair, for example. You can have fun with her wand. As I said, you can have fun with her, with her uh, dress. And here you can see I'm putting some texture. This is one of the great facilities with Affinity Designer. It's got, um, not only does it have a, a, a vector um, aspect to it, but it's also got a bitmap. Uh, facility as well, where you can actually add a bit, bits of texture fairly effortlessly. So, uh, as I say, it's like the best of Photoshop meets the best of Illustrator, all within the same roof. And uh, you certainly do need little bits of texture in uh, these images, because otherwise it'd just be a little bit too hard-edged. So, uh, and also particularly with the eyes, because as, as I say, the eyes are the window through the soul, so you really sort of do concentrate on the uh, things like the irises and it's just a way of having a, just a little bit more realism, a little bit more luster. And here you can see that I'm um, feeling my way around with the, uh, the folds in the dress. Folds in dresses are, folds in clothing are always kind of, certainly when you're a beginner, they're, they are difficult to get on top of. I mean, there is a system and it, it is to do with, I mean, you know, it's when it's working well. It's it's to do with the gravity, it's to do with the um, the rhythm and the motion actually that you get into your into your line, 
and it's got also got to do with the kind of material that you are you are um, indicating. So um, the uh, it's 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 one of those skills that you've just got to sort of work out. But the more you do it, the easier, easier it becomes, and uh, a lot of it's just trial and error. Does it look right? And uh, of course, the great advantage that we have these days is instead of having to keep a sort of clippings library, uh, which what illustrators used to do in the old days, you've got Google, and you can just type in stuff, and you can find it online. And you can um, you can do your research when and if you need to. And you can see that I'm beginning to add the uh, a little bit of backlighting is being indicated here. And uh, now we're actually dropping in the environment, the all important environment that she's going to be inhabiting. And as I mentioned earlier, yeah, she was going to be uh, in a fairly dark place so literally we've now got black against black um, but you'll see what's going to happen next it's 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 a way of um, actually providing you with something to sculpt against and what we're going to do is we've got this window behind her and this is emitting a sort of pinky purple light which is in keeping with this green and purple styling that we've got uh, which indicates uh, sort of the more exotic but deadlier end of the plant scale and we're going to um, start adding a little bit of uh, backlighting you can see I'm dropping a shadow here on the on on the eye and again that's very important it's just relates to that quiff of hair over, falling over her brow and uh, here we go we're dropping in those little bits of backlight and we're pasting these within the outline shape uh, which we created in the Affinity Designer and so we don't need to see the form because the form has already been pre-established when you copy and paste those bits of backlight and the form uh, will show up and then you can you can uh, just uh, tweak and mo and and modulate those uh, those bits of backlighting, and just add some some expressive lines here and there, and just generally um, start to add a little bit of sparkle to to the character uh, so that she's. Um, she she actually begins to sort of look as if uh, you know she 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 has got a life beyond just this one image that she's occupying, and you can see now that we're beginning to drop in the the plants in the background. And I wasn't a hundred percent sure what to do as regards color, whether to make them purple, whether to make them green. So I'm starting off purple. I'm thinking about the kind of plants. I'm thinking about the kind of flesh eating plants. You know the. Uh, uh, the fly agaric and those other kind of plants but these ones are slightly deadlier you know perhaps you wouldn't let your you, you know your 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 pet rabbit near them uh, but um they've got that sort of hint of menace which is so important because again we're giving a little bits of a clue about it's not a plant she's you know she's She's kind of uh, a little bit deadly and uh, you don't quite know where she's going with it all, but you know it could be potentially quite a bad place. And um, just, just adding general interest to the character and um, making her intrinsically sort of fascinating, uh, which is what you want with all your baddies uh, you know, with your femme fatales and she's definitely a femme fatale and um, it's again it's it, it, it's it's just sort of keeping the the image moving keeping those lights and those highlights and again I'm beginning to think about the uh, lens flare so I'm creating some lens flare 
and making sure that it kind of works so you I've got some sort of guideline that there uh, which 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 is going to help me place those it's a flare distortions and uh, then I'm just sort of gently adding them in and uh, having fun with them actually uh, you can you can adjust the opacity you can adjust the uh, the blur on these on these elements uh, which is again in Affinity Designer very easy to do uh, you can actually you get little slides and you can actually see this all happening in real time so you can say oh yeah that's working or oh, that's not quite working but you, you, you've got this fantastic in, interactivity so it's not like uh, I mean the problems I used to have with uh, Illustrator where you had to sort of pre-anticipate and also if you were using anything like a Gaussian blur in Illustrator it wasn't native to that application so it would start to make huge demands on the RAM and you could hear your computer engine sort of going into overdrive you know the cooling systems coming on etc uh, Affinity Designer is much more uh, RAM friend, uh, e e efficient and as a consequence you can actually sort of experiment uh, in real time which is what everybody wants to do uh, I mean it's, it's just great to be able to uh, to uh, you know try these ideas out see if they work and if they don't well you know you've lost nothing and you've gained a little bit of uh, knowledge in the process and uh, you can see that we're now adding just a few little touches to her sleeves again it's this getting this plant thing going it's the um, you know the organic quality experimenting with making her hand a little bit green and pink and then I kind of decided against it uh, the flesh tones uh, are grey which matches actually the, the characters that we've created in this uh, uh, wonderful project which uh, Roger Hearn the writer and I are working on called Spook Squad and it's not a plant as I said is uh, one of the villainesses from Spook Squad and she teaches in Miss Gilda Lilly's elementary school so um, yeah she's going to be one of your more memorable uh, biology teachers and uh, you can see that I'm now experimenting with the plants and thinking well yeah they're not quite working in, in, uh, in the purple let's try a bit of green but we could have a little bit of purple retained for the uh, for the reflected light for the backlight uh, coming th coming through the window uh, you're gradually working our way around all the little bits of plant and um, then I'm beginning to add some texture to the to her dress again it just makes this thing a lot more organic you don't really want this these images to look too super computery, too super smooth. So it's a question of uh, just working with texture to counterpoint the very clean lines that you got with a vector. And at last, I'm beginning to sort of think about yes, let's make the uh, a, a wand emanate green light because after all it's, it's sensible it ties up with uh, what's happening with the dress for goodness sake you know, unless you've got green light thing happening so let's make it obvious that the source of that green light is the end of this wand even though there is a hint that light is coming from from above I'm now adding yet another shadow to that eye because it needs just a little bit a little bit more darkening down and final touches to the hair just to sort of keep it keep this fronds going slightly beyond the um, the boundary of the image and putting a little bit of uh, detail a bit of color texture in the um, in the uh, sky a little bit more of the detail in the hair and 
a little bit of lighting in the in her hand which is holding the wand and these are all sort of small details but they are kind of important because they they are telling you a little bit about you know the light and what she's doing it all adds and it's just a very delicate operation of balancing all these these, these elements so that they don't pull your eye in the wrong direction uh, now it's just flipping it just to make sure that there are no egregious errors back again to where we were fine patches she has a little front of hair just going beyond the outline of the head which is very important just makes a, the image a little bit more lively and convincing and I think we're heading towards that final moment and the final moment has arrived and there we go I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I have bringing it to you speak again soon